Is Constable Spring making notes? I don't believe so. Did you have your official police notebook with you at the time? No. The alleged admission that you said Mr Canning made, when was a note of that admission first made? I made a statement. And when was that? Uh, about two weeks after the, uh, the record of interview. Did you have your police notebook with you at the time? No, we, we don't have to carry our police notebooks with us at all time. How long have you been a police officer, sir? 32 years. Isn't, part, isn't it a part of basic training to make simultaneous notes or notes shortly after the event so that matters can hopefully be recorded accurately? Yes, but uh, I made a note uh, later when I made a mistake. I remembered everything that occurred um, and uh, I consider that that to be normal procedure. What time do you say you left the offices of the uh, of PHV? Uh, the first time or the second time? When you were taking Mr Canning to the police station? At about quarter to five. So the admissions you say that he made would have been fresh in your mind at the time of the interview? Yes. You didn't put those admissions to him during the first part of that interview? No. In fact, he gave you an answer to a question where he told you that he didn't definitely hadn't taken the purse and said, why would I do such a thing? I don't need money. And she was going to lend me some money for the trip anyway. I wouldn't do such a thing to my own secretary. You didn't put the admission you say that he told you at his office to him at the time? No, that's right. You didn't think it was irrelevant at the time? Well, no, I don't understand now it's relevant, but... Uh... But at the time you didn't think it was relevant? Well, I, I think that's, that's not the case, it's more it's slipped my mind. I suggest that the reason why there is no note in a notebook as to the alleged admission and why it was, wasn't put to Mr Canning during that record of interview, or during the interview, is that such admission was never made. No, well, that's not true. I suggest that what happened on that day was that you went to the office and you said to Mr Canning that you wished to question him. Well, that's correct. He said to you, I know nothing about it, I can't help you, and I'm busy. Well, he was, uh, he, he was agitated. And he... Is that what he said to you? Well, he did, yes. Did you then ask him to accompany him to the police station to assist you with your inquiries? Well, after, <coughs> after he said to us that it had been on his mind all day. And but did you ask him then to accompany you to the station? Well, after we had a conversation about it, yes. Now, I suggest that you got into the interview room and you said to Mr Canning, look, if you don't kick in, this is after you'd had the first part of the interview where you said, look, I haven't done it. After you heard that, you suspended the interview. Yeah, uh, I, we suspend, I suspended the interview because uh, Spring had to go to the men's and uh, I had to make a phone call, also Spring had to make a phone call. Now, what was it in that record, or what was it in the interview that Mr Canning had said that was so controversial to lead you to make further inquiries? Well, I don't know whether that's the case at all, whether there was anything controversial that, that you know, Mr Canning had to say, we just had to make some inquiries. Hadn't those been made before you started the interview? Well, these were subsequent. Subsequent to what, Sergeant? Well, to the whole event. Yes, but what was it from that interview? I don't know. Now, I, su I suggest in the intervening period when the machine was off, you said to him, look, if you don't kick in and tell us what we want to know, you may not get out on no. That old chestnut, no, that's not correct. And he said to you, what should I say? And then you went and said, just say you took it and you don't know why you did. You can say you're ashamed if you like. You ought to be a silver tail like you. No, that's no, not true. And then he said to you, whatever you want, I just want to get out. And you said, okay, just about follow the bouncing ball. No, well, I deny that. Now, you said when you 
started up the interview again, that you came back into the room and he was there in an upset state. Yes, he was crying. And he said, you seem to have been away for hours. I'm glad you were back. I want to make a clean breast of it, etc." Yes. Now, why didn't that make its way into the record of interview? Well, Spring wasn't back in the record. Was the tape going? Well, no, I don't know. And you didn't say, look, stop there. I just want to turn on the tape and get this down on tape. No. Now, did you have any notes? Uh, my name is James Beer. I'm a constable of police attached to the licensing and recovery of the Monroe Squad, Carl. On the 23rd of December last year, were you on duty with Constable Musket? Yes, I was. At about 8.45 p.m., were you parked near the Royal Oak Hotel on the corner of Wide Street and Jackson Avenue? Yeah. Where were you at about 8.45 p.m. on that day? Um, I was at the corner of Wide and Wide Street and Jackson Avenue near the Royal Oak Hotel. Were you on foot or were you in a vehicle? I was in a vehicle. What did you see? Well, I saw a man that I know as Walter Watkins uh, attempting to cross Wide Street. Can you describe Mr Watkins' actions as he went from one side of the street to the other? Object. What if anything did you observe? What if anything did you observe? Watkins was uh, staggering and he had great difficulty in making it to the other side. He stumbled and almost fell inside the curve of Wide Street. Where did he go from there? Well, he walked to the entrance of the Royal Oak Hotel, bottle shop, and paused for a few moments before uh, entering. Did you observe what he was wearing? Uh, yeah, he had a pair of jeans on and a uh, blue jumper and a shirt. What, if anything, was he carrying? Uh, I'm not sure. Did he do anything before entering the shop? Object. What, if anything, did he do before entering the shop? Well, nothing. He um, paused, just paused, and then went in. What was the distance between where you were and the, the shop? About 100 metres. What, if anything, could you see of the shop? Well, I could see inside the shop, I could see the entrance, so... Uh, yeah. Did you observe <coughs> what you saw Mr Watkins do in the shop? Object. Can you describe what Mr Watkins did when he entered the shop? Object. After, this is, this is the piggyback questions that we've been talking about. After you saw Mr. Watkins entered the shop. What, if anything, did you see him do? Or what did you see? Did you see him after that? But while you were looking at the shop, to your observation, was Watkins there? Yes. What, if anything, was he doing when you observed him in the shop? What, if anything, was Mr. Watkins doing when you observed him in the shop? I saw him go to the counter and uh, had a conversation with uh, James, Daniel Jones, who was the, the counter attendant in the bottle shop. Um, he then uh, departed, came out of the bottle shop a short time later, and uh, um, my partner and I, Musket, approached him and had a bottle of uh, Mildara Green Sherry in a brown paper bag. Can you describe Mr. Watkins' physical actions as he exited the shop? Object. What did you see Mr. Watkins do, if anything, when he exited the shop? Oh, he was stumbling all over the place. Did you and Constable Musket do anything? Yeah, well, we went and uh, went, approached him and uh, to arrest him. Uh, Watkins smelt of intoxicating liquor, his eyes were bloodshot and his speech was slurred. Uh, we went up to him and identified ourselves. 
and uh, he sang out some words. Um, he said that he. Oh, don't worry. What is it? Now, how long have you been a police officer? Um, eight years. Have you had much dealing with um, people? Oh, extensive. Was there a question there? Have you had much to do with people who have been affected? By well, them? yes. Could, yes. You could you form any opinion as to list of what can state sobriety? Oh, I will think. Later that night, at about 10, 10 p.m., did you have a conversation with Daniel Jones? Yes. In, in the presence of Constable Musket in the bottle shop. Yes. Could you please uh, relate that conversation? Well, um, I cautioned him, and that's a good Could you, in RX speak, first person? All right, I said, we well, want Judy in the bottle shop tonight, and Jones replied, yes, and in the bar as well, it was a busy night. I said, do you know Walter Watkins? He said, yes, he's a regular here. I said, was he in the bottle shop tonight? He said, I can't remember, hang on. Yes, he was. No, I can't say that. <laughs> Another customer. This is on sound recording. Yeah, you're awake, you're on. Um, <laughs> another customer bumped into him and I thought he was going to knock over a round of wine. He was a bit annoyed. Don't um, don't tell me the old bastard knocked off another bottle from him. I said, what condition was what did he know in the bottle shop? Jones said, I don't know, nothing special, I didn't take much really take much notice. I said, I put it to you that Watkins was obviously drunk in the bottle shop. Jones said, was he? I said, I put it to you that walked up to the counter and you sold him a bottle of Mildara Green Cherry tonight knowing he was drunk. 